Does your audio kind of suck? Well, there's a good chance if you clicked on this video, then it probably does. I am Chris Curry, and today I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to record high quality audio for your videos. We're going to start by looking at the equipment and software that you're going to need. Then we're going to look at the microphone setup and finally finishing on a full overview of the post-production process. There's a lot to cover, so let's not waste any time and jump straight in. I want to start by talking about the microphone that we're going to be using for this tutorial and why. As a content creator, I've invested a lot of money trying and testing various different microphones, but I've never been fully happy with the results. That was until I came across the Blue Yeti X. There's a good chance if you've watched a YouTube video in the past year or so, You've probably already seen or heard other creators using this mic. That's because it's one of the best USB microphones available on the market at this price point. The Blue Yeti X will set you back about £160, which is a lot, but then again it is one of the best investments you can make as a YouTuber. With that being said, apart from this microphone, here's a list of everything else that you're going to need for the setup. One MacBook Pro with a USB adapter because f**k Apple. A mic stand with this shock mount specifically for the Blue Yeti and I'll explain why we need that later. I'll also be using this windshield. We're going to be using two pieces of software for this tutorial. You'll need to download the free Blue Sherpa desktop app, there's a link in the description. Then we're going to be using Adobe Audition for recording and post-processing our audio. For the mic setup, I'm going to attach my arm stand to a table, then I'm going to attach the Blue Yeti shock mount. Buying this will save you a lot of time and frustration, as I found when using the Blue Yeti on the stand it came with, it was picking up all the vibrations and I could hear this in the background of my audio. So with my recommendation, buy the shock mount, just save yourself a lot of time and frustration. Then you want to unscrew your Blue Yeti and attach it to the shock mount. You want to make sure the blue logo is facing you, then position the mic at a 45 degree angle a couple of inches away from your mouth. Don't forget to add the windshield, then connect the mic to your laptop and we're done with the setup. Now we've finished with the mic setup, there's one last thing we need to do before we can open any editing software and this is crucial for making sure that you eliminate any unwanted background noise. So I'm about to save you a lot of time. With the microphone connected, head up to your system preferences and then click sound. From here make sure the Yeti is selected and then we're going to bring the gain all the way down to 2%. This will stop the mic picking up any unwanted background noise and it will lower the volume overall, but we can turn this up later on. After you have done that, we're now ready to open Blue Sherpa. If this is your first time using the software, you'll need to register your microphone. Once you've done that, click the mic and you'll see we now have access to edit some basic settings. Here you can fine tune the microphone settings, such as adjusting the headphone level, mic gain, and even changing the polar pattern. If you're only recording yourself like me, you want to make sure that you have cardioid mode selected. This means that the microphone will only pick up the audio in front of it, which is helpful for eliminating any unwanted background noise. I'm going to leave all my settings as they are and instead go up to this box at the top that says enable and click it. This opens up another screen that will give us a lot more options to edit. This might look overwhelming at first, but we're only going to make a few small changes. The two main things you need to know are you can record a mic test here and listen to yourself play back. Then over on the right, you have a list of presets to choose from. My personal favourite and what I'm using for this recording is the Broadcaster 1 preset. But play around with these and find the one that suits your voice. I find that the base settings of the Broadcaster 1 preset work quite well with my voice, so I'm only going to make two small changes. I'm going to bring the noise reduction all the way down to negative 60 decibels, and then I'm going to change the master output level to negative 40. That's pretty much it for Blue Sherpa. You can do a lot with this software, but that's really the basics of what we need. Before we move on, there's one last important thing to note, and that's if the Blue Sherpa software closes at any point during your recording or your microphone disconnects, you're going to have to reconnect it again, otherwise you're going to lose all of those settings. So just watch out for that. Now we need to head over into Adobe Audition where we can begin recording and fine tuning our audio. The first thing we need to do is make sure our Blue Yeti is selected as the default input. Go up to the top and select preferences, then audio hardware, and simply make sure that you have the mic as the default input setting. After you've done that, we need to create a new project file. Go to File, New, and then click Multitrack Session. With that done, we need to make sure our mic is connected one last time. So click these two arrows, and then on our input, we're going to select the Blue Yeti on the mono channel. To record yourself, you need to turn on this R button. And then if you want to hear the playback with a slight delay, 
click the I button next to it. Then go down into the timeline and hit the record button and you can start speaking into your mic. What you'll notice is that although your audio doesn't sound bad, it doesn't necessarily sound great either. That's because we need to add more effects in our audio and this is where we can really enhance the quality of our voice. What we're going to do now is build a template that you can save and use for all of your future audio recordings. Start by turning the effects button on at the top. For our first effect, click this arrow and then go to filter and EQ. Then we'll start by adding a graphic equalizer at 20 bands. These are my settings, so I recommend pausing the video and copying them. Great. So for our next effect, we're going to filter in EQ again, but this time we're going to add a parametric equalizer. For this, I'm going to use the loudness maximizer preset and then tweak the points just like this. To gain access to another point, simply click these numbers down below. Then we're going to add a hard limiter, which you can find again in amplitude and compression. These are my settings, so pause if you want to copy them. If at this point your audio is still too quiet, go to amplitude and compression and add an amplify filter. Then turn up the volume as much as you need. I have mine turned up by 15 decibels. The higher you turn this up, the more noise you're going to be capturing. So you might want to add a denoise filter, which can be found in the noise and reduction tab. I have mine set to 20% and you don't want this to go too high because your voice will start to sound robotic. I'm going to add two more effects. In the amplitude and compression, I'm going to add a single band compressor and then use the voice leveler preset. Then I'm going to turn the output gain up to 20 decibels. And lastly, if you're in a room with a lot of hard surfaces, you might want to add a de-reverb in the noise and reduction tab. And that's pretty much it. Before you do anything else, make sure you save this as a template and then you've always got it to refer back to. I'm by far not an audio specialist, so if anyone does have any feedback, please leave it in the comments below. I really hope this tutorial was helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.